I think you guys know I love historical lenses, right? So all my lenses have like a special purpose. Like I love to shoot 5x7 portraits with this one and this one is for a little bit larger formats. But for ultra large format you'll need larger lenses, right? And my channel today is about a large lens. It's pretty big, right? <laughs> Yeah, it all started when last year I went to photography flea market and looked for historical lenses. I found some really interesting ones. I found even one that was really heavy. It was not historical, I guess. It was not that old, but it was huge. It was like 125 mm f 0.8. It was so heavy, it was really hard to pick up. Uh, yeah, and at some point in the flea market I found this lens. It's a Gasque and Chaconnet. It's made in Paris. It was really interesting. Uh, it's a Petra design lens. Yeah, I had to buy it, you can imagine. It's really funny how tiny my mirrorless camera from Canon looks against this lens, right? <laughs> Shots like that you find on my Instagram. I've got post a link here somewhere. So follow me if you want to see more behind the scene footage. And yeah, let's go on with the journey. The lens came without a flange, right? So I decided to get a threaded ring for it instead of a flange because for me it's easier to mount it like that on my camera, but I'm gonna tell you later more about that. Uh, I had to find a partner who makes me the threaded ring and I was lucky to find someone very close to my hometown. hometown. Their name is uh, Hamburger Fertigungstechnik and yeah, I drive over to them to get uh, some measurements done so can they can start to work on it. And the measurements, that was the first problem, so for the measurements for big lens you're gonna need uh, a bigger caliper, right? And uh, I'm gonna show you a little video about that, it's quite funny. <laughs> Meanwhile, I made a lens cap for the lens. I had already a press ring, so I just had to figure something out. I'm gonna show it to you now. I think the lens cap I made turned out great. And now I had also to make a lens board to fit it on my camera, right? So I reused an old lens board I had already and reinforced it and I'm gonna show you how I did that. And meanwhile, uh, Hamburger Fertigungstechnik uh, created my threaded ring and they were very friendly, they uh, answered all my questions and they did even a small video about uh, the production of the ring. Um, thanks so much for doing that, so I can show it to you guys here. I can strongly recommend this company. I'm gonna link them here below and on my blog, okay? Now enjoy the little video.
idea to mount the lens with the ring on the lens board and either a sheet of brass. I think with this combination it spreads the weight of the lens better across the lens board. Yeah, and here's the video about how I built this little uh, sheet of brass. Yeah, and finally I was able to mount the lens on the camera. I was so looking forward to that. As you can imagine, I wanted to know the focal length of the lens. And this is pretty easy to do. You just focus on something far, far away, like an infinity. And then you start to measure on the focus point, that's where the aperture sits normally, uh, to the back of your ground glass. So after you measure that, you of course want to know uh, what the maximum aperture is that the lens has. And for that, you measure the front element of the lens. And with these measurements in mind, you use the focal length and divide it by the measurement of the front element. And you're done, you have the aperture. And I figured out this is a 500 millimeter lens with about f4.5, maybe a little bit uh, less, maybe f4.7, but it's, it's pretty fast for, for this big kind of a lens, right? Normal Petro lenses have water hot stops, right? This one has a washer stop. This is uh, a system where you can put discs into the lens and the lens came already with a disc, so I was very happy about that too. The first portrait I did was very special to me because it was of Professor Dr. Werner Sobotka. He's well known among all the photographers here in Austria and I remember when I met him at the Navarre the first time and I thought, wow, <laughs> what a nice and friendly person he is. It was really nice to talk with and I want to tell you a little bit more about Mr. Sobotka. He's, uh, 
He taught about media technology in Sweden, in China, in Finland, in Croatia and in other Eastern countries. He taught photography in New York, in Vienna. Yeah, and Mr. Sobotka is also the president of the Austrian Photographic uh, Society. And this is really important for me because I'm a member now for two years, I guess, maybe three, I'm not sure. And uh, you have a lot of benefits if you are a member of them. You have like free exhibitions, there are free lectures, you have the right people to ask if you want to know something about phot photography, about stereo photography, about all the different kinds. One place to go, uh, a link. Everything about the membership down below and you find it also on my blog. Uh, yeah, I just want to mention that because I really enjoy all the exhibitions I saw and all the meetings uh, with uh, all the people there. Yeah, I felt a little bit like doing a portrait of the Austrian Albert Einstein of photography. And with this thought I went into the shooting and yeah, enjoy.
plates turned out great. I love them and I'm happy that Mita Sobotka likes them too. I love the look this lens produces on a 30 by 40 cm plate. It's very unique. The focus is in the middle, directly in the center. It forces you to look there. And uh, I'm happy I have this lens now and I can uh, achieve this, this special look with it. Thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed my journey I had with this lens and I hope you enjoyed also the portrait session uh, I showed you. And now for me it's time to prepare for the next workshops. And yeah, thanks for watching and I'll be back guys.